Hi everybody. One of the fundamental things you'll see in a lot of our apps is the ability to view HTML content in it. And core to all of that is this little thing known as a web view. So in this video, we're going to take a look at what web views are, how they're used, and in all the various places that you might be running into them. So let's get started. So if you had to look at a description of web view, starting with the definition of it itself, a web view is two big things. It's an embeddable browser that a native application can use to display web content. And so the two things that I want to emphasize from this are embeddable browser and native application. And so let's dive a little bit deeper into what they mean. So first, let's talk about native application. What do I mean by native application? What I mean is it's an app that is built on a language or framework that's really optimized for the operating system that you're currently on. So for example, if you're building an app for Mac OS, you're probably building something in Swift, Objective-C, C++, or something more fundamental like that. If you're building it for Windows, you might be doing something in C Sharp or C++, and, and so on. It's really using the, the native language that is most closely tied with the system you're currently designing or building currently on. So to put this into context, most of the apps that we use in our mobile device, for example, are going to be native apps. And many popular you know, apps like Microsoft Office or Camtasia or a lot of the apps like your Adobe apps, for example, they're going to be native apps as well on our desktops and laptops and, and, and so on. So when we talk about embeddable browser in the context of native apps, let's first talk about what a browser is. You know, a browser is this thing that you see that you use to surf the web, whether it is using Chrome or Firefox or Internet Explorer or Edge or Brave, you know, any number of browsers out there. You're using it to navigate to a website, view some HTML content, and of course, indirectly CSS, JavaScript, and all the various things. So here's an example of Chrome showing us Wikipedia for an article on raccoons. And if you break this browser apart into two parts, one is the UI and shell, which are the visual elements that you see to interact with your browser, like the address bar, the tabs, and the subsequent menus. Then you have the browser engine area. This is the part that actually deals with taking all this raw content and visualizing it into a form that we can actually make sense of. And that part is really part of the the browser viewport, the browser engine, very different terms for describing that. Now, if we put it all together in the context of a single app, what you might have is you might have a native app, which is almost like this massive island. And then within that, you have a smaller island. That is your web view. And this web view is really what is going to be defining the HTML content that's going to be displayed inside of it. You know, a great way of thinking about it is you have a document and you have an image inside a document. The image is a separate thing from the document itself, but when you view it together as one whole piece, the image and the document are all almost seamlessly part of the overall experience. And that's the way I think about web views and native apps. You know, native app is the outer container. The web view is the image-like thing that instead of displaying raw pixels from an image source is displaying HTML content from either a local source or a remote source. And that's the big thing about web views is that the content you're displaying, it could be things that are locally installed as part of your application, or they could be coming from a completely different location altogether. Like in this case, I have an example where you have a view and the contents of the web view are coming from example.com slash food at htm. Nothing prevents you from being able to do that. Think of it in many ways as an iframe for your native applications. And so this flexibility that web views provide opens up a whole new world of code reuse between our typical web apps that we have been building for some time and the parts of our web app that we want to display inside a native application. And the, the part that sets it apart from traditional UI application frameworks and approaches is that by using a web view, the JavaScript that's running inside our native app has the ability to call native system APIs. That is something your browser cannot do. That is something a lot of situations where you have web content displayed inside an app container cannot really do. It's the web view and the security it provides that allows us to actually do go beyond what the browser and the web context provides into the capabilities, but be able to call native capabilities that go beyond that. And so the way I like to describe it at a very high level, there are many, many layers of complexity here, but if I had to simplify it a bit, let's start with the right-hand side. Let's take a typical web app that you view in your browser. You have some web content. It is viewed inside your browser. The browser itself acts as a major sandbox 
where you have your shell and the UI, the, the visuals of your address bar. Then you have the rendering engine that takes all the content and maps them to visuals you see on screen. And that in turn is translated into the native APIs and platform calls that is ultimately used. But the, what you do, the code that you end up displaying or the code that we end up writing is all localized, just what the browser provides its capabilities. For various security reasons, you really can't go beyond the, the boundaries of what your browser provides. Now let's go left to look at the native app with a web view. In this case, the web content is very similar, but the container that is hosting the our content is a native app. It's not a browser, it's a native app. And within this native app, we have the web view where we have the web rendering engine and a special component that is often found in web view situations is what's known as a bridge, a JavaScript bridge, which goes to a native bridge, which allows you to communicate between your web app and the native app itself. And what this means is that my JavaScript can do maybe capabilities A, B, and C in the browser, but in the context of a native application where it's viewed inside a web view, I have the ability to go beyond that. I can go beyond just the A, B, Cs, but maybe even go into the Ds, Es, and Fs and access capabilities that only a native application can potentially take advantage of. So that kind of gives our web code the ability to do more in a web view context without having to jump into unfamiliar languages that we talked about earlier or more in the native technology side, like your C++ and your Objective C's and C sharps and Swift's and so on. And so here's an example of just a web view that is being used. Let me see if you can play here. Yep, so for example, here I am, I'm watching Twitter and I'm clicking on a link and so when I click on a link, notice what's going to happen. Instead of me going take into the browser, I see the link open fully inside the Twitter application itself. That's an example of a web view. I say similarly with Facebook. You know, I'm in Facebook right now. I click on a link. And when I click on this link, notice what's going to happen and where it's going to load. It's going to load it fully in line inside the app itself. Another example of a web view. And you can even see where it says Facebook mobile browser in the about for this little view. And this is a, a very simple example of how web views are so common in like our everyday browsing experiences. And in case you didn't see that part where it said the Facebook mobile browser, I took a screenshot of just that and you can kind of see it right here where you can see the mobile browser being called out as the thing that is displaying the web content inside the larger native application, which is either Twitter or Facebook. The other big area you'll often see web views is for advertising. Think of all the native apps, your games and so on that you might have been playing on your iPhone or your Android device or your iPad. And notice that you might see an ad in there. Those ads are almost always gonna be web view based, served from a, a remote HTTP endpoint. So that's pretty cool as well. Now, in these examples, the web views they're not a big part of your application. They're really what I like to call minor supporting actors in a stage that is fully dominated by native apps and other native UI elements. But the thing is, web views are pride capable of doing more. They have the depth and range to be the stars. And there's a large class of apps where the web content load inside of them actually is the entire user experience. So these are often called hybrid apps or full screen hybrid apps where you do have a native app as the overarching container, which is really the part that a web view can only thrive in, but the, everything else that you see in there is fully brought in by the web view. There's very little native UI, probably no native UI or any native indication that this app is anything more than something served from a web location. And so from a technical point of view, if you think about it, these are all native apps. They're still native apps. The only thing these apps do is to just host a web view that then loads the web content and the UI that someone we see. Now, you might be wondering why? Why would I really wanna go out of my way to build a native app that has a web view when I can just go into the browser and do all these things? There are several reasons for this. One of the biggest reasons is developer productivity. You know, if we have a responsive web app that works in the browser, having the same app work as a hybrid app on a variety of devices is pretty simple. So you can imagine that I have a web view, I have a native app, and then my app, in this case, you know, I made up a URL called smilinghexagon.com. That URL now shows this content across all these variety of devices. And what makes this more appealing is that unlike a browser, I have an app icon that I can do all these cool things with, but if I wanted to go further, if I wanted my app to take advantage of native device capabilities, the web view with the JavaScript bridge and the native bridge that we looked at earlier, 
gives me the ability to kind of more deeply integrate with the platform, the system, or the APIs that a typical web app in the browser would not be able to take advantage of. For example, I may want to display richer notifications, or I may want to integrate with the alarm system, or access my contacts, or do a whole lot of things that would be kind of cool to do, but not possible in a traditional web app. And the other big thing is that by going with the web view where the content is served remotely, I have the ability to update my app without having to do a whole lot of extra work. So here's an app where everything is blue and, and yellow, but now I swapped it a bit where now all my hexagons are no longer blue, they're pink, and there's a, the yellow in the background is more yellow than it was before. In a traditional native app, this would have meant that I would have updated the binary, uploaded to the app store, waited for some time to get approved or not approved and then all of the, the rigmarole needed around that. But by relying on a web-based application, the web view allows me to just update the content on my web server and then every endpoint that has access to that site now displays it with the latest and most greatest version, which is a kind of a cool advantage for a large class of apps where this makes sense. Now, the last big category we'll see web views use is in has to be extensibility. Many native apps, especially on the desktop, they give you some ability to extend the functionality by installing an add-in or extension. And because web technologies are far more approachable than many things like CSS or, or sorry, not CSS, C++, C Sharp or whatever, these extensions are often built in web technologies and we need a way to display them. A, cop, you know, a popular example I like to use is, you know, when you're using a Microsoft Office application, a, a typical example of a, a native application, there's often an extension for Wikipedia. And the Wikipedia extension is fully based on a web view. So you have native UI all around you. And then the web view really provides you with the ability to bring in data from Wikipedia. And to the end user, it's completely seamless. But as the developer, I now have a very easy way of extending the capability of a native application with this rich web-based interface that is provided through the web view itself. But the last thing to talk about is we talked about the web view in terms of like the rendering engine, but what exactly is that rendering engine on the various devices? On iOS, that rendering engine is always WebKit. The policies on the, by Apple ensure that only WebKit is the browser that you can use. And so the same engine that powers Safari also powers Chrome, Firefox, or any other browser that you might have there. So yep, that sounds a little bizarre, but that's true. Chrome on iOS actually uses WebKit under the covers to render all of its content because that's the only rendering engine that is supported. So any native application, for example, like Chrome, it has a web view and that web view is going to be using the WebKit rendering engine. On Android, the rendering engine of the covers is usually Blink and the same way that powers Chrome. Android is a little bit more permissive in other browser rendering engines to be there. So you may see other rendering engines available as well. Those are both the mobile devices, you know, iOS and Android, but on desktop, Windows, Linux, and Mac OS, these are, you have more choices there. They're more permissive desktop platforms. So you have a lot of flexibility in choosing the web view flavor and rendering engine used under the covers in you know, Electron is a popular kind of a, a framework for being able to build apps using a web view. And there are many other flavors of frameworks out there and they each give you their capabilities on which browser rendering engine you want to use. So you don't often have to be tied to one particular version of it. Though in general, it's often better to go with the one that the system really recommends as a default one. So on, on Windows, it'll probably be Edge, which is of course based on Chromium nowadays. On iOS, or sorry, Mac OS, it'll probably be Safari. And on Linux, it could be either Chrome or any of the various other browsers that you can get installed there. So there you have it, a, a quick overview of what web views are and the really important role they play under the covers in making a lot of our applications work. So if this is the first time you're learning about web views and some of the things they're doing, take a step back and look at some of your favorite apps and play around with them and click on some of the menus and see which parts of the app are probably coming directly from what's inside the application itself and which parts are probably being used by a web view and coming from a remote location. You know, one easy way of doing that is launch your application, turn off your cellular or Wi-Fi and just start using the app. I will quickly see like where the edges between what's available locally on my machine that is probably not web content and what is being rendered as web content from a web view comes into play. So that's a, an interesting experiment, maybe homework, if that's what you want to call it, that you can take a look at. So if you have any questions about web views and all the things you want to do, 
please post in the forums at forum.group.com where I and others will be happy to help you out and answer any questions about web views or anything web development you might be interested in. If you like this video, tell your friends and enemies all about it. Hit subscribe to be notified of other videos that will be coming along in the you know, in the short while about various other topics, including web fundamentals. Follow me at Group on Twitter to be notified of both things that I'm you know, kind of reading, things that I'm creating, or things that I want to share that I found that's kind of cool web development related that you might like. And lastly, if you like the feel of reading from a physical book or a Kindle device and having the idea of like having pages of content you can scroll through outside of a browser, check out any of my books. Creating Web Animations is a one that I wrote recently that has been really popular. One had a lot of fun writing it about making things move around, but there are more fundamental books around JavaScript and arrays and React on the canvas that you might be interested in as well. So go to amazon.com or anywhere else books are sold and you can find a paperback and digital editions. And with that, I will see you all next time.